probably just going to be more ravers from here on out, right? Just infinite ravers. I have to say, this deck is quite interesting to play. It's very strong, but... Um, you know, apart from that, it's still... I'm really enjoying playing this. Like, it's it's cerebral, it's challenging. Um, and yet it's still... You know, you get to win a lot, which is fun. Obviously, it's powerful, but... Um, <laughs> the mirror again. So I, I heard that Faye was meant to be statistically the best uh, general. But I wonder if that's changed? Excuse me. Okay, this is a pretty nice hand. I like having Kaido Assassin Miss Dragon Seal. I don't like this. This is probably good in this matchup. But it's still a bit fragile as far as board presence goes, and we're going to be behind on board initially. Uh, I guess we will be able to... If this sticks, we can maybe t play this on a mana tile and then zoop that over and kill something. Seems fine, but... We can play Kron on turn 3, and that's generally a pretty good thing to do. He's 6-6 six, six worth of stats, um, and sometimes the stats have force field. So, let's do that. Oh, perfect. Turn 1 range minion. Love it. So we're just playing this all the way back here. And then coming up. Um, what are we replacing? Probably one of these. Um, possibly nothing. Let's replace the Death Strike Seal. I very much doubt this unit will actually survive. Um, maybe that was a bit greedy. Maybe I, maybe I should... Uh, I wonder which of those plays gives me the higher percentage chance of winning. Interesting. So this is nice, because now I can play the, the Mist Dragon, kill this, and then play Healing Mystic. So I guess I'm going... I'm going to take these Mana Tiles, right? So we want to go... Do I take them with? I guess whatever I do, my opponent can kill either of my minions that I've developed. The other option is I move forward, play Kron, hope to replace onto this. No, that seems terrible. That is terrible. I can teleport onto it. No, that's bad as well. Um, I think we make the clean play. Let's drag this into the back. Shoot this. Oh wait, we've got we have the combo, Ether Master Inquisitor Kron. Um, so I think we do this. I kind of want to deny my opponent this mana tile because she seems to really want it. Um, so sure, let's do that, and I'll replace this because it's a bit fragile. I'm ahead on tempo and probably... I feel like I'm behind on cards, maybe I'm not. I've got three in hand, she's got five in hand. I've got three minions on board, she's got... Yeah, maybe maybe we're, we're even. Um, so next turn is probably just Kron. Um, I would like to try and develop the Ether Master first and get more value out of him. Because, he's, you know, he's obviously going to die the turn he comes down. Because four toughness is not that much nowadays. Um, that's Miss Dragon Seal? Yeah, sure. Well, that clay is that, but we can still kill it for free, so that's not a massive deal. We can just hit it. Where's that going? Over there. Hmm. So... I can hit this. Let's, let's stop. Nah. No, I probably just want to develop the Kron, right? Although, it means I can't kill the Heartseeker unless I spawn a Rush minion. It's still a decent shot. I'm going to hit this. Come up here. Come up here and look scary. And do this. 
flying. Flying is fine. Flying will let me clear this next turn. Um, do I go face? Yeah. We got a fox, that's really good for reloading. This is good as well, actually, because probably has got X ones. So this is fine. So I expect this turn is attack, attack, run away, probably kill this. Um, oh yeah, no, I shouldn't have attacked, should I? Because of that. Oh, huh, that also works. Maybe she's killing this instead then. No, oh, okay. Oh, she's killing the two to fly, obviously. That would make more sense. Oh dear. That's scary. Hello. Okay, so... I can't move. We go here. In a focus. Hit this. Shoot this. Attack this. Guess we develop one of these first. Doesn't really matter. Spent an inner focus to kill two range minions. Isn't Lantern Fox a great card? Isn't it really fair and balanced? Fantastic. Um, opponent still has a big hand. Like, we're sort of probably still slightly behind, I feel. Um, I'm not 100% sure where they got a two for one. I guess the. Um, sorry for the background noise there. Um, I guess the. Lantern Fox, ah, uh, sorry, the Alcon Lawmaster did some pretty good work. Um, using the Primus Fist to trade up, and then, um, and also having made the Mist Dragon Seal, but we got to kill that particular guy for free, so maybe not. Maybe we're not actually behind, we've just got a bunch of small cards. That's a bit frightening. That's a very strange play. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so we can attack this taking four and then shoot it. Backstab for three. I think we're I think we're starting by attacking this heart seeker, but um Let's replace you. Ooh. That could be spicy. So, I really don't want to take all this damage, but I think I think that's the play. Uh, so we start like this. Come up here. Stab. Where is the avatar going? The heart seeker's going there or there. Probably there. Um, the avatar could just go in front of it, actually. Make a 3 4. Yeah, that seems fine. My left total is not that low considering that we're now reasonably ahead on board. Um, like, we did just kill a Sunsteel Defender for free, more or less. Like, we lost a charge on the Lantern Fox. That's really not bad. Um, and so we definitely increased our onboard lead and decreased our opponent's presence. The question is, do we have lethal? <laughs> Bold. Okay. So, if the opponent attacks one of these, they take two. Of course, we get the value. Opponent's on 14. This is in range. This is still in range. That might have been a misplay. It's probably going to cost them. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not bugging the maths up. 
Okay, there's a good backup option if I miscount. Come on. I did miscount. What did I miss? I double counted something. Oh, that could be a huge problem. Alright, in that case... Plan B is, I guess, just, like, murder the White Widow? What did I mess up? I must have double counted something while I was... Um, yeah, I think I double counted the chakra or something silly like that. Oh well. <clears throat> Question is, what should I have done instead? Probably shot that, traded with this. That's pretty reasonable. But it's now getting to leverage that card advantage. Although we do have a hard seeker with death touch. Eey. Damn. Might have cost myself the game. Uh, we can do this and hope to hit a spell. If we hit Killing Edge, we win. Phoenix Fire, we win. Uh, not in a focus. In a focus isn't good enough. Oh, wait, hang on. All we need to do is remove one of these, right? Um, so the Silver Beak doesn't do it. Let's see what's in our deck. Four wins, Mega. Is that good enough? No, we need one more spell still. But I can't... I'm going to play this first. Let's play it. Um, what am I going to do? Probably... If I don't get there, I'm going to... Oops. Shoot this, run away. Try and body block, I suppose. So... That's the lethal, right? In fact, yeah, this is... Whoa! Whoa! Unpunished. <laughs> we got that. Is that 11 and 1? Man. Right, come on. Let's do it. 12 wins. Just got to beat what I assume is going to be another Songhai mirror. I got decks reasonably well equipped for the mirror, I guess. Just because of the um, Lands and Fox. Uh, I guess Mind Warper is very good in mirror matches more likely to be good there than anywhere else because Songhai players are usually holding on to a killing edge or something for when it comes up because they have all these spells that they want to run lots of but are relatively situational so they'll just sort of sit on them and try and make um, try and maneuver the game into a situation where the spell is good I know I've certainly been doing that um, and I do it on, on the ladder as well you know I'm still annoyed that I miscounted though. Fail. <laughs> I really shouldn't have done that. Hmm. Come on. Matchmaking timer is. I guess there can't be that many people on this many wins. <clears throat> I haven't been this high before, so I haven't. Oh, here we go. So it's been it's been all magma and song high today apart from one Abyssian player who I'm not entirely sure why they were there. So this is sort of sweet because we can do our Ether Master Shiro and make this not a 1-3. Um, I think this is going possibly this. Seems a bit greedy at this point. I mean I guess it is very good at swinging tempo but we will also fairly likely be able to just make a um, 5-5 five, five Shiro. Sorry, 5-6 Shiro. So, let's not bother with that. Play Center Focus, draw Nasha. Sick. Um, is a Magma player likely to have spells? Which of these do I keep? That's a Battle Pet. That's kind of in an unfortunate position, actually. Um, <clears throat> I can 
move up here to sort of draw it off. But I don't really have anything to do in that in that case. Um, right, come on, key beholder. Which one do I? Let's let's replace this because the Nasher is great at punishing this. Well, there's the end of focus. But I feel like it doesn't really do anything. If I go here, a move will come there and attack me, and then I can kill it with Shiro or the Nasher next turn. Um, but if I want to do that, I can't take the Monotile this turn. Um, I guess the other option is I just play the Shiro, play the Ether Master behind, so it gets buffed. Shiro takes three and then presumably dies to Varth. And then I hit this next turn or put River next to it um, so that it dies or even just put the Nasher next to it and get a, <coughs> a two for one back the other way. I guess that's probably okay. I'm gonna replace this kid in there because I'm probably gonna get to use it for a little while. <coughs> It's possible I should have just let the... Oh, I probably should have played the Ether Master here and let this go to 1. Uh, and then I'd have kept my Shiro, who is obviously better with the Killing Edge. No, I guess the Ether Master's ability is better while we're behind, right? Because we can use it to dig for removal. We can try and assemble some sort of combo like this with Killing Edge with this and you know, try and find one of our Killing Edges again. Um, it's pretty likely that our next turn is just playing Nasha uh, and getting rid of these. Like a Nasha here is looking pretty good right now. Oh my. So the Nasha trades with that exactly? Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah, so we just play Nasha here. It almost kills this. It hits him for three trades with the Amu. Um, we can't really take this Monotile in a useful way, though. Um, can we... We can't hit the Sunseer, either. That sucks. Because if we attack this, we can't play the Nasha there. Um, let's start by doing some replacing. Let's get rid of this. That's probably still bad. That's a good card. I don't know if it's useful or not, but it seems fine. Um, the other option is we play the Nasher and attack the Sunseer with Inner Focus. That doesn't seem worth it. Trading Inner Focus for a 2-1. Seems meh. Um, <coughs> So Nash is going here, and I think Raver's going to come forward, and the Ether Master is going to take a step back. Um, I will not bother attacking Varth in the face because my left turtle is probably more valuable than his right now. Um, but that clears that lot. Hello again. Um, Sorry, some computer trouble in the background there. <laughs> um, so, probably has four cards in hand, so do we. Um, our board is marginally better, but not relevantly so. Um, although our minion is quite a lot better, actually. Um, that's scary. We can kill it with... Th no, not quite. I guess we can go, like... Inner focus death strike seal, but that seems terrible. Um, I don't even do that anymore. Rex. Sure. Um, so I guess we can put death strike seal on the ether master and trade that. It's kind of an okay option. Um, oh wait, no, we can make a range minion with death touch. What am I talking about? Um, do I also want to run away in the process? I feel like maybe I do. Um, uh, maybe not that far. I should probably separate myself from my little heart seeker. So you're going in the corner. You're getting death strike seal. You're killing this. Um, 
Then I can't afford the Crimson Oculus, so let's just ditch it. That's boring as well. That's probably still bad. I think you're going to run into the corner to bait out this Rex. And you're going to go here, maybe? Do I even play this guy? Can I have quite a low hand? And this assassin does very little right now. I think I'm just going to leave him where he is. Oh. Oh no, I guess, of course, I guess Raver was closer, right? So this is neat because the Ether Master basically gives me a way to play the Dust Whaler. Um, so between the Dust, between the Ether Master and this, I can play the Dust Whaler anywhere I want. But it's going for Plan F, um, as I like to call it. So we can shoot with Heartseeker plus this. Ah, uh, sorry, plus this. Um, to clear them. I would also I'd quite like to get rid of the Rex, but... Um, so if I get inner focus on this, that's quite good. Um, let's replace the Mind Warper. Oh, that could be interesting. Although, it doesn't do anything right now, does it? Also, fine. It's a card. I don't think it's a card I'm playing. Um... <laughs> I'm taking another three from the racks. No, 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 because I'm shooting it. Man, Dust Wheel is awesome. So I wouldn't begrudge my opponent for coming over here and bashing one of these in the face. Um, but then we can develop a nice new ranged battery on the other side um, of the board. So one thing, one thing I've learned recently from playing against Magmar on the ladder is that um, suppose I'm playing Abyssian and I have Shadow Sister Kaleno, right? Um, I think he's forgotten that Dust Whaler has flying. Don't care about that. Um, ow. Uh, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've used enough focus, haven't we? Healing Mystic also a good card. I'm not what we need right here. Um, let's see. So I can use the Dust Whaler to kill the two, three. I can use a Key Beholder to immobilize the four, two. Um, and get in for one, or play the Killing Edge. I think I'd rather keep the Killing Edge in my pocket. Um, so if you go... Ah, let's just put it here and kill the Mantella. Develop this. Develop one of these, and heal myself just in case. Sorry, I was talking about Kaleno. So, suppose I'm playing Abyssian and I have Shadow Sister Kaleno in my deck. It was obviously very important against anything more aggressive than me, which is anything because I'm playing Cassava Control, right? Um, if I hide, uh, try and hide Kaleno behind me, I'll back into a corner quite quickly and generally she'll die. She'll get chewed up or she'll be caught up in mechanicals or what have you. If I play her and then move, either Varth has to ignore her and keep coming after me, or go after her and spend several turns not being able to reach me. So in this case, by running away from my minions, I lose my ability to body block them. That's going to die. Um, I lose my ability to body block them, but I also uh, gain the ability to protect myself 
by way of forcing Vath to spend time away from me hitting my stuff. And of course then, because I'm Raver, I can make more ranged minions, so that doesn't even work out very well for him. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pew, pew. Slight BM. Pew. So we made it. Twelve wins. We got there. I'm going to tip my opponent for that. That's incredible. I'm so excited right now. That's super cool. What do you get for 12 wins these days? Ooh. Solid. Yep. Sweet. Oh, awesome. Don't think I own this card. <laughs> Missed walking. I've always wanted one of those in foil. Ah, this is sweet. So basically it's the, the same-ish as getting seven wins, but I think we're looking at about 50 more gold, about 60 more spirit, and some random cards, which, you know, are not unappreciated. I guess you're able to get legendaries and stuff as well as rares. I don't know if they're always prismatic. I would assume not. I assume this is just sort of essentially random. And obviously we got one of the most important bits, which is the free Gauntlet ticket, so we can do it again. Um, awesome. So why did that happen? So, obviously Raver's really strong. We knew this. I've been complaining about this this entire time that I've been doing these streams, right? Raver's Bloodborne spell is dominant um, and goes absurdly well with some other um, abilities that Songhai have. Like, you know, the ability to buff things up with Killing Edge. The ability to move minions around to protect them. Um, and the access to existing strong ranged minions like Keyboulder. Um, we also had some pretty spicy cards. We had Inner Focus that massively overperformed. Uh, Dust Whaler overperformed. Definitely picking that again. Um, I would rate that as somewhere like like a top third sort of pick. Like I wouldn't maybe... So it, you know, it's probably above half of the cards. William Blake says, congrats. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, very, I'm very happy right now. Um, yeah, I would. I think Dust Whale is actually a real sleeper hit. The card is great. I've been even testing it on the ladder um, to give Vitruvian a way to deal with the 5-3 ranged. And it, it's fine. It's obviously nowhere near as good on the ladder as it is here. But um, I would definitely play that card again. I probably wouldn't pick it over a Kiba Holder. But I might pick it over, say, a Chakri Avatar, or, depending on how many spells I had, or, um, I guess most two drops, actually, like, provided my curve didn't desperately need them, or I didn't already have a couple of six drops. For instance, I might have been not too amenable to picking it if I'd picked the Grail Master, um, when I had the option to do that over the, uh, Onyx Jaguar. Um, I think the deck was... It had a couple of definite spikes, like the Lantern Fox, obviously is an absurd card, won me several games almost by itself. Like, obviously it was a part of the strategy in general, but, you know, that thing can easily get you three for ones that affect the board in a meaningful, impactful way as early as turn two. Um, and there are very few cards in this game that really have that privilege. Um, Fox is you know, one of the best cards in Duelist in general, so having that was definitely lucky. Beyond that, I think the deck was pretty normal. Like, we have a lot of commons. We had a Kron, but he's been nerfed, so he's no longer the Scourge he once was. He's just kind of a fine minion now that forces your opponent to chow through it, but isn't particularly hard to chow through, so... Um, you know, I think... I don't think there's anything especially broken about the deck compared to other decks. It's just I genuinely think like a lot of Songhai decks are going to be that good. And I think that was backed up by the number of Raver opponents we faced after we got past seven wins. It was just Raver and Magma for days, plus that one random Lilith player. That's all we've played against today is Raver and Magma. Um, I guess having the Fox helps our, um, helped our deck in the mirror. Certainly there were a couple of mirrors where the Fox was awesome. Um, I think... Generally, mirror matches in card games come down to... They're a lot more draw-dependent than um, 
other games in general. And because not that many, there's some, there's some quirk of game design that means that not that many factions are good against themselves. Um, there's, you know, things like Magmar can easily kill small minions and play a lot of large minions because they have things like Plasma Storm and Natural Selection, which are intended to support their own big stuff. So in a Magmar mirror, your Plasma Storms are rubbish. Um, I guess Magmar is sort of a bad example because of Egg Morph, but even then, this, the symmetry on things like Vath's Bloodborne spell mean that you're not at an advantage of having a bigger general than your opponent because theirs is also 5 power or 6 power or whatever. In the case of Songhai, you both get to make ranged minions, but because of the way ranged minions work, um, you know, the first person to play something the opponent can't answer that gives them repeatable value. So normally a ranged minion, but also like that's uh, that Scarlet Viper that we lost to, that one game we lost was to an opponent who played a Scarlet Viper, immediately killed something with it that could have threatened it, and then prevented us from, you know, it was the Viper was out the way, I couldn't really play around it because it has flying, um, and we didn't really have a way of dealing with it in the deck, like we didn't have an Onyx Bear Seal that we could have top decked into or whatever, um, to undo that, to counter that play. So she just kind of landed a trump card um, that swung the game. And we did that in a lot of the other matchups, like Lantern Fox was often my trump card um, that beat the other player's deck by itself, because it, it does that in Songhai Mirrors in general on the ladder. Um, like, it is the best card in Songhai v Songhai, bar none. Even you know, I think the second best is Four Winds Mega, which we also had, um, and that helped us break that one player's Cyclone Mask. Great. Um, so I guess the lesson to take away from that is when drafting um, a faction that you know is good, be sure that you have tools to win the mirror. Think about um, beating yourself possibly more than others. Like if you're playing the top deck of the format, like if you're playing Raver in this case, or I guess all those Vath players like, that we played against today, um, be sure that you're playing something that can beat a similar deck. You know, have a couple of cards, prioritize cards that will give you an out and a tr or some kind of trump. Like if you're playing Magma and it offers you a metamorphosis and you know that Magma is popular on a ladder, maybe pick it, you know, over something else. Although that one Magma who metamorphosis us and then died, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> but I guess it's less good in this matchup than it is elsewhere.